but one of the participants gets angry at Kang Mu's actions and raises his weapon and points it at the hero. But the supervisor intervened quickly and easily, knocking him to the ground, holding the sword and hitting him beside his head. As the hero observes the female supervisor, he seems to have been impressed by her abilities, so he thinks it would be useful to test her. Strangely, the hero's shadow extends, and a strange being emerges from it, which is the goblin with the red hat. Participants enter the dungeon and for clear it. They must enter the goblin's cave to obtain the return stone. And as long as nothing serious happens, the supervisor will not help them. While they were gathering, a goblin suddenly appeared and attacked them. But easily the hero kicks him and he flies away then dies. Which makes the other stunned by it. And then the goblin's attack begins. By cooperating together, the participants do not face much difficulty in getting rid of them. Meanwhile, the supervisor notices something strange. So she go to inspect the surrounding area. And finds a group of, of goblins' corpses scattered around the place. Apparently, there was someone else who had already slaughtered the goblins. Then she yells, This is an emergency. We'll go back now. Then she checked the participants, and someone is missing. He is the hero Kang Mu, so everyone starts looking for him. An hour earlier when the hero was still there, it seems that he got bored because fighting was like child's play to him. So he decides to go alone. And when he gets far enough away from them, he uses the legendary skill obtained from killing the Red Hat Goblin. The skill called the Family Skill. With it he can bring the dead back to life as long as the target's body is not badly destroyed. So he summons him and orders him to go and kill all the monsters in the area. However, the skill's only weak point was that if the power of the summoned monster was higher than the caster's, it would be difficult to control him. So Red Hat appears to refuse the order at first. But then one of the goblins appeared and approached him. And after seeing him, he says that these are disgusting, retarded creatures who cannot even talk or carry weapons. How dare you say we are the same kind? So he gets angry and rips him in half. When the participants were looking for Kang Mo, he suddenly appeared from among the trees and says he was taking a leak. The supervisor scolds him and tells him to stay close to her and that his punishment is after they get out of the dungeon. Then she accidentally notices the returned stone near them. Suddenly, one of the participants runs terrified to the stone in order to get out quickly. But then the goblin in the red hat appears and knocks him to the ground. Then he raises his machete to finish him off. But quickly, the supervisor jumps behind the goblin and hits him. Finally, the battle that the hero was preparing for from the beginning starts. During their fight, the goblin ignores the supervisor and goes towards the beginners. So she tried to catch up with him. But halfway through, he suddenly stops and jumps up. Then attacks back the supervisor behind him and manages to injure her. Since things have become more dangerous than expected, the supervisor is forced to show everything she has. She uses her special skill acceleration, which allows her for a short period of time to increase her speed twice, which enables her to easily get closer and land a critical hit on him. So he uses a smoke bomb. Taking advantage of the fume hood and before anyone noticed, he captured one of the participants. The supervisor marvels at the intelligence of the ghoul and also at his ability to speak and believe that if she leave this goblin alive, he will kill many of the participants in the future. So she decided to eliminate him, even if that meant the death of the hostage. Then the hero intervenes and uses the stick and hits a stone freeing the participant from the goblin's hand. The supervisor tells Kang Mo to back off. But he refuses to do so, and since he has tested her abilities, he knows that she can't win against him. So he says I didn't do anything since the beginning of the raid so I want to help out a he little bit. He hits another stone, this time slightly injuring the face of the goblin. Then the supervisor rushes to attack him, but the goblin throws another smoke bomb that directly hit her. Kanye Mo stepped forward and hit with the stick a heavy blow, which makes the goblin loses his balance and pushes him away. The supervisor takes advantage of the opportunity to attack from behind but the goblin avoids the blow and kicks her. The hero sneaks back behind him and knocks him to the ground. 
The supervisor quickly attacks to not allow him to stand again. But the goblin confronts her with difficulty, and cleverly pulls the battle to the whereabouts of the hunter who was passed out, to use his body and throws it at her. Then he seems to have lost control of himself and wants to kill the participants. But the hero intervenes and orders him to withdraw immediately. So he uses another smoke bomb and runs away. With this the battle ends without any losses. After leaving the dungeon, the supervisor goes to report the matter. But it does not seem that any change has occurred in the dungeon. So the officials ignore it and don't believe it. Then the scene shifts to an employee running quickly. Then he walks into the principal's office and says he's noticed something weird in some of the tests. The manager checks the results and says this is unbelievable. Are you sure there's no equipment malfunction? Then suddenly another employee appears and submits a file in the same person. It turns out that he is the hero Kong Mu. But this was not the end. A third person appears and says that one of the guilds is paying a hundred million to obtain the test results of one of the applicants. He is also Kong Mo. But the manager refuses to do so and says that 100 million is a very small amount for such a person. Looking at the results of the hero, it seems that all his attributes are at the highest level. So the manager orders her employees to collect as much information as possible about this man. Later on, the hero returns to the hell level. A window appears saying that the next task will start in nine days. The hero opens the golden chest he got from the previous mission and get a rare item blade of the ancients and also a crystal cube, which is used to refine and develop weapons. So the hero uses it to upgrade the metal gauntlets and dagger. With this, he obtains the silver hand armor legendary rank, as well as the bloody blade. And after he tries it, it seems that it's so powerful hopefully this might help him a lot in the next mission. Then a system window appears says that the hungry star is watching him. The quest the bottom of the pyramid begins. Then a window will appear to him that Hungry Star wants to test him, and if you accept this task, the reward will increase. As for the task, the hero must survive for 48 hours. As for the test, it is a curse that will be cast after the mission starts. The hero accepts the test. Then a window appears to him that the stars he met previously are all watching him. Another window shows that he has been cursed, the curse called Tasty. The hero is shocked and surprised by this curse and says, Don't tell me that you mean my body. Then he looks back and finds the goblins and the fairy ring and staring at him like a delicious plate of food. The hero panics and says what kind on earth is this curse? It seems like a curse that releases an appetite-stimulating scent. And monsters can smell it from far distances. Then the hero hears something coming at him. So he prepares to fight and an army of mosquitoes suddenly appears and attacks him. But because of the hero's poisonous blood, mosquitoes die when they suck it. Even with the large numbers of mosquitoes, the hero seems careless about them. And when he came out of the building, it was not only the mosquitoes that targeted him, but also the pigeons. And with this he is being ludicrously chased by an army of pigeons and mosquitoes. While chasing him, he reaches the end of the road and jumps off the cliff saying, Give me something I can fight properly. When he lands, it seems that his request has been fulfilled, and a group of monsters are waiting for him. So the hero seems happy with that, but he soon changed his mind. These ghouls seem to have great physical strength so they can easily block his attacks. When someone catches him, he grabs the hero's head and bite it. The monster surrounds him with a large numbers. And every time the hero comes back to life, he is eaten alive again. Also, every time he dies, the mission time is reset to the beginning. Because of this, the hero experiences terrible pain, and no matter what he do he can't find a way to escape. Then suddenly Kong Mo hears a voice telling him to turn right. The hero feels terrified and thinks he has gone mad. But the voice continues to speak to him, and guides him to the way to escape. So he can miraculously escape from these monsters but suddenly a giant spider appears from under the ground and attacks the hero. Kong Mo hardly avoids the attack, and fortunately the monsters behind him hit. And while the spider is busy with the monsters behind him, he wonders who helped him. It turns out that it is the constellation that gave him the legendary skill before, 
and it is the Whispering Planet. But in exchange for her help, she asks him to become one of her servants. She promises him that she will give him everything he wants, but in return he must obey and love her. In fact, the Whispering Planet was trying to control the hero's mind and hypnotize him. The hero drowns in a sea of dreams that the Whispering Planet shows him. And when he was about to give up, he suddenly wakes up and says, Unfortunately, I already have a girlfriend. Because of that the hero thinks he has angered the star. But she doesn't seem to mind it. She says he must find a way to survive first. Then she give him a small gift that we will see later. But it does not seem to the hero that there is any way to escape. Then the spider pounces on him and weaves her webs around him. After a while, the the red hat goblin appears, accompanied by the fairy Renyan, and saves the hero from the cocoon in which the spider imprisoned him. Luckily he didn't die but seems only to be unconscious. So the fairy hits him on the stomach and wakes him up. Later when the hero looks at his hand, he finds that his shield has changed, in addition to having six fingers instead of five. This seemed to be the gift of the Whispering Star, a rare legendary class item, which increases the strength of the fist three times and can also control the spider's web. The hero looks very happy with the gift especially the spider web. Later, the ogres gather at a narrow tunnel, and it seems that the smell of blood has attracted them to this place. Then a full mosquito appears and pinches one of the monsters. Surprisingly, other monsters attack him. It appears because the hero has tamed mosquitoes and made them suck his blood. Then they would go and dump the blood inside the monsters. That what makes the monsters attack each other. Through the spider's web, the hero can locate the monsters. So he continued to manipulate them for a good period of time, but another group of monsters appear that are smarter than the orgs. Where they cut the spider's web, so the hero cannot locate them. And when they get close, they appear to be a group of zombies in army uniform. The hero attaches his blade to the spider's thread, then hits the zombie heads from afar and eliminates a large number of them. But this does not seem to be enough, so he decides to escape to the roof, but when he climbs, Another group of zombies was waiting and shoot him with rifles. But this was not the biggest problem. Because of the curse of the blood he obtained, another group of orgs monsters appears behind him. From nowhere. Thus, it is surrounded from all sides. Then the orgs and zombies start attacking together, and a system window appears saying that the time remaining until the task is completed is only 46 minutes. But this time is enough to tear the hero several times. The hero takes out the crystal cube and eats it. This was in order to renew his mana and uses the skill he was avoiding because it drained mana fast. It is the dominant ion skill. Through it, he can intimidate and terrorize monsters and control them if they have a little intelligence. So he controls the zombies and orders them to attack the orcs. It works, but it does not seem that all zombies are under the hero's control, because some of them were outside the skill range. And when the zombie is about to kill the hero, the red hat goblin appears. And he chops off the heads of zombies and says to the hero, you should thank me for this later. And he continues to kill monsters. But the hero's mana is quickly depleted. And when it's run out, he will lose control of the orgs and will inevitably die. So he looks around and tries to find a solution. Then he decides to attract a large number of mosquitoes to him and takes out a white cloak from the store and wears it. When mosquitoes attack him, they cannot penetrate the cloak, so they attack other monsters in the area. This may save him some time until the end of the task. But the hero loses his caution a little and a zombie approaches him and bites his leg. The hero gets angry and crushes the zombie's head, but because of the bite he loses a lot of blood. And if this continues, he may die because of the fast draining of his blood. So a crazy idea comes to the hero head, where he commands some of the mosquitoes to attack monsters and suck their blood. Then the mosquito returns and injects the monster's blood into the hero. The hero screams and falls to the ground. Then his body begins to change and he turns into a monster. And he starts screaming like a madman, pounces on the monsters, then grabs the head of one of them and eats it. Then a window appears after that says you have obtained the title of Lord of Hell. With the influence of this title, the hero can increase his physical abilities by 30%, but
but in return his blood is drained by a large amount. The hero is gripped by a great desire for blood. So he starts randomly attacking monsters. And he chops up a large number of them. But the orgs weren't that weak so someone managed to punch the hero. Then he grabs his head and crushes it on the ground. A quickly the other gather around him and pin him to the ground. Then they starts to rips his intestines out and eats them. Gradually the hero starts losing his consciousness, and when he was about to die, the monster inside him awakens, and he bites the ogre from his head and eats it. Then the waterfall of blood begins and the hero says, Since the beginning of this stupid mission, I have been eaten all the time, but now I will eat everyone. The hero jumps high in the sky and fall on the ground destroying everything beneath him. And the massacre begins, but this time not against the hero but against the monsters. He catches one of the monsters and smashes his head like a watermelon. As for the others, he cuts them into pieces until the last one of them. A mountain of monsters gathered under the hero's feet. Unbelievable massacre in human history have happened. Where one human single-handedly took down an army of monsters. Or rather, half-human. After many crazy and horrible events, the mission ends successfully and the curse and negative effects are removed from the hero. And the hero lies under the red moonlight, surrounded by a pile of corpses. Then he says, I am so hungry.